Hey everyone, Jamie McDonald here. Uh, just want to do a little quick review of the Olympus Pen EP5. This isn't going to be your typical review that you might find from one of the tech sites. This isn't going to be full of specs and all that. This is just kind of from a pure enthusiast point of view because that's what I am. I'm not a, a spec junkie, a pixel peeper, or any of that. I'm just somebody who loves to shoot and I'm assuming that you are too and that's probably why you're here to hear what I have to say about the Pen EP5. Um, let me just start out by saying that the the Pen EP5 is obviously Olympus's latest Olympus Pen. Um, this is what they're going to be considering like a flagship pen camera. And if you get your hands on one, you will immediately understand why they're considering this like a flagship or like a luxury product as far as that line is concerned. Um, it's built unlike any of the other pens that I've had my hands on so far. It is it's heavy, it's got some heft to it, it feels very solid and rigid. When you look at the exterior of the camera, you will not find any screws until you actually get down to the underside of the camera, and then there's a series of screws on the bottom that hold it together. Aside from that, when looking at the camera, it's a pretty seamless piece of equipment here. Again, I can't emphasize the weight that this camera has to it. I don't, I'm not fully aware of the, uh, the underlying framework of this camera, if it's uh, a magnesium alloy or something of that nature, but just holding it, you know that you're holding something that's extremely solid. I'll just go over a couple of the quick quick review of some of the features that I really like about this camera. One of the biggest ones for me personally is the Wi-Fi. I know there's a lot of people out there that have the iFi cards or maybe Toshiba Flash Air or Transcend now has uh, Wi-Fi cards. And the connection process with those, for me personally, has been kind of hit or miss. It's, it always seems like I'm jumping through some kind of hoop in order to get it working. And it hasn't been just that easy or user friendly. Uh, the way Olympus went about doing this is completely different than any of those. Uh, when you fire up the camera, and of course I'm going to try and do this and it's probably not going to look right. But in the upper left hand corner there's actually a little Wi-Fi icon. And when you tap that you're going to be presented with a screen that has a QR code on it. When the QR code is visible on the screen, you'll have to excuse my mess here, I'm in the middle of trying to create an office space. You're presented with the QR code and once you have the Olympus Image Share app installed on your iOS device or Android device, you launch that app and you can go into the setup screen and what the setup screen is going to do is it's going to ask you to scan that QR code. Once you scan the code, you're going to be prompted to install a new profile, and it's a Wi-Fi profile is what it is. And what that basically means is that when your camera's turned on, your tablet or phone or whatever you're using is going to see your camera as a Wi-Fi hotspot. It's going to recognize that as one that it trusts and it will allow you to connect to it. Once that connection is made, um, from within the app you've got some options, and the one everybody's going to be interested in is the remote control. So what you're seeing live on the iPad is actually what the camera is seeing right now. So I will just change this to just focus only mode and I will focus on what is on my desktop and I'll get a little bit closer. You'll have to excuse me, I'm not exactly a videographer, I suppose it probably shows. So here we'll refocus over here on the iPod cable. And up here on the, the glass. And then to take the picture you can snap it that way. Um, there's the finished picture. Or you could actually set the camera up to, as soon as you touch it, it's going to focus and snap the picture. And there's the finished picture. It's dark in this room, so there is a little bit of graininess. It's probably shooting at like ISO 8000. So there's the Wi Fi. Once the image has been captured, um, I know it's took another one for you. You can select to save it to your camera roll. And it's Wi-Fi, so if you're shooting, you know, on the largest JPEG settings or whatever, it can take a second to transfer that file. Once it's transferred over the app, you can do a few other things with it. Um, open it up in the Olympus Image Share app, and you have access to all of the, uh, the art filters that you're familiar with with the Olympus cameras, which is kind of fun to be able to do that, uh, the workflow of just being out shooting, images transferring to your phone, 
uh, applying an art filter if you like the art filters and then shooting them up via Instagram or just straight to Facebook or Twitter. It's pretty cool to be able to do that. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, when you're done, you can actually just turn off the camera right from your app. Another kind of cool feature. I plan on using this for wildlife photography or urban wildlife photography, I guess you might call it, because I have some bird feeders set up outside of my house and it'll be convenient on days where the weather's a little too hot because I'm not a big fan of the heat. I can sit inside in the AC and watch the live view display on my iPad and when I see the birds come in, I can snap the picture. I know that sounds really lazy, but okay, maybe it is just a little lazy. So let's go on to another feature here. We get out of the Wi-Fi. Um, there's an inner velometer built in. You can do time lapses with this. It'll actually compile the time lapse right inside the camera. So when the time lapse is done, it's processed in camera. You actually have just a finished file just like that. Uh, you don't have to use an external piece of software for that. Pretty cool. Um, like the EM5, we have a swivel and tilt screen. Uh, Maybe it's just me. I haven't pulled down my OMDs since I got this, but I think that the X, the screen on this one is actually thinner. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just mistaken. Maybe it's an illusion, but I think it is. Um, like some of the other pens, you've got a grip on the front. I have smallish hands, and this camera actually fits my hands just perfect. This is like Olympus said, hey, Jamie, we're going to make a camera for you, and they did. So front grip, rear thumb grip, ergonomics-wise, um, it's perfect for me. I love it. Um, dual control wheels, uh, which is new for the pens. It's getting very DSLR-esque by having the dual control wheels. Um, another cool feature that they have added is there is a toggle switch on the back next to your record button here. If I flip that over to the number two setting, my front control wheel, which when it was on number one, controlled my aperture. Now when it's flipped to two, it actually controls my ISO. And again, you can customize this so much it's insane. Uh, I just found that this is a setting that I really like. It works good for me to be able to flip between uh, aperture and ISO just with the flip of a switch. I really like that. Um, five axis image stabilization built in like the OMD and if you haven't had a chance to use an OMD or this camera with the five axis image stabilization uh, you're missing out. It's pretty incredible. And imagine having a steady cam built into your camera. It's about like that. I'm not exactly the most stable person when I'm shooting. My form probably isn't the greatest, I guess, but it steadies me out f fantastically. You'll notice on my EP5 that I have a viewfinder attached. Obviously, you can get it without the viewfinder, or you can buy the Super Kit, which will come actually with this lens, the 17mm f1.8, and the new viewfinder, the VF4. And I know I'm talking about the EP5 right now, but I'll just touch a little bit on the new VF4 viewfinder. Um, I'll admit that when the mirrorless cameras first came onto the scene and the first iteration of viewfinders came out, I was not a fan. Um, I think I have actually said somewhere online that I felt like I was watching TV and taking screenshots of it. Uh, that was with the first generation of EVFs. This is where it's at. This is the future of photography right here and if you don't see it you're going to get run over by it. Um, the field of view in this thing is humongous. I've looked through um, D700, D800, 5D, Mark II and threes. Um, I've seen uh, through a, I don't know, whatever Canon's is. I'm not a, anything other than Olympus guy. I think it's a 1DX. They're big honking crap sensor camera. But anyways, the field of view through those viewfinders was nothing like what I'm seeing through this. I feel like I am actually inside of my scene. I do not feel removed from it in the slightest bit. Uh, the separation from me and my subject emotionally, there's no separation. Earlier generations of viewfinders, I felt, you know, a little detached from what I was shooting. With this, it's total immersion. It's a beautiful viewfinder. And I hope everybody gets a chance to at least go to a store and see this viewfinder on another camera. And paired with this pen, it's just astounding. Um, I think that's about it. I mean, I suppose I could mention that the, this pen does have a built-in flash with high-speed sync. Um, you can wirelessly or optically control like the uh, FL600R I've got up here or the other Olympus flashes that use that type of command system like the FL50. Uh, there are some other manufacturers, I think METS makes a flash that you could control with this. Um, oh, I, how could I even forget these two? 
ISO 100. Um, I think that's probably a first for these kinds of cameras, and if it's not, then whatever. I love being able to use ISO 100 for landscape photography and just for shooting outdoors in general. It's not a native ISO 100 on this sensor. It's actually like an extended ISO, but I've done test shots outside yesterday when it wasn't raining and it was nice and sunny out, and ISO 100 is phenomenal. There is no image degradation, so the fact that it's in extended ISO doesn't play a role at all in image quality. Um, and one other thing too, one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed. That is, that's DSLR territory. That's one of the things that I missed when I transitioned from my DSLRs to the mirrorless cameras. I missed the one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed and the ISO 100. And I missed those two primarily when using like a large aperture lens in bright conditions. So if I'm doing any kind of portrait work outdoors and it's sunny and bright, I can still shoot wide open on these lenses in most cases, like at f1.8, I just drop my ISO to 100, and at 1 8,000th of a shutter second, I don't have a blown out image, but I still get that ridiculously shallow depth of field that I want. So, yeah, I'm in love with this camera. I think my OMDs are going to be pretty upset. Uh, so, that's my little quick review. I apologize for the lighting in here. Again, I'm just kind of getting this little office space set up. So, and again, I'm not a videographer, so I'm sure my white balance isn't correct or what have you. Uh, if you enjoyed the review, just uh, drop me a line and say, hey, good review, or say, hey, dude, don't do reviews. That's really not your thing. Um, and I will be doing a review over on the Small Camera Big Picture website. And on that review, I will have links to a Flickr gallery where I will continuously dump EP5 images, so if you want to go over and scrutinize them or pixel peep them or whatever, just get a feel for what this camera is capable of, I really encourage you to do so. And again, thank you for stopping by to watch the review, and I'll be seeing you guys around. Take care.